Hello and welcome to this talk on bringing a claim for judicial review in which I'm going to cover some of the staff and judges uh, who work in the administrative court and tell you a little bit about what they do and or how they can assist with your case. My name is Declan O'Dempsey. I'm a barrister from Cloisters Chambers. One of the features of the administrative court which you should again take seriously is when the administrative court office staff make requests of you. Now, they can make requests for documents or information and they'll be doing it in order to, com to ensure you're complying with the overriding objective and making sure that the case is in a position to be heard by the judge. So when you get a request from the court staff, uh, comply with the request. Now, the, their requests don't have the force of a court order. But if you fail to comply with them, that may be a factor uh, which will be considered by a judge or court office lawyer, which will weigh against them in any number of situations, but including whether to grant an interim order or whether to give you permission to apply for judicial review it may affect whether you get substantive relief and it may well affect whether you recover your costs even if you win. So do take requests from the court staff seriously and try and comply with them. So you should be trying to ensure compliance with the rules and procedure and orders but especially you should ensure that you're complying with the duty of candour, with the requirement to make full disclosure of all material facts, something else that we talked about in the first talk, and something we haven't talked about yet, the procedures for bringing urgent cases before the court, and I'll deal with that in due course. Um, finally, if you're going to settle, or if you're likely to settle the case with the other side, then keep the court informed. This is because they may well need to reallocate the time to another case. I want to say a few words about the court office staff. Court office staff can request missing or late documents, as I've said. They can refer problematic issues to a court office lawyer, to the master or to a judge. And they can assist you with the basic judicial review procedure but their advice shouldn't be considered to circumvent any legal provision for example in a statute or in case law or the uh, civil procedure rules or indeed a court order. In other words you can't rely on court office advice as a reason for not complying with legal provisions which are imposed on you. The court office staff cannot give legal advice on the merits of the, of the claim. Apart from anything else, they're not legally qualified, but they are not allowed to do that, and you're not allowed uh, to rely on any legal advice that they may appear to have given. Just looking at the staff requests that they may make, they can request information or specific documents if that information or document is required under the civil procedure rules, or if they think it's going to be uh, necessary in order to allow the court properly to consider or case manage the claim. So again, the rule is comply with those requests. Now, if you're unable to comply with a request, it's very important that you send in, in writing, your reasons for failing to comply with the request. Again, remember that your failure to comply with requests may be taken into account in a number of ways when the court has an opportunity to exercise its discretion over a number of different issues in the case. Staff can escalate matters if they think that the case is not being managed in accordance with the overriding objective. So they can make inquiries to establish the proper further course of action that should be taken and they can refer the case to an administrative court office lawyer or to a judge to consider further case management. 
there's a non-exhaustive list of examples given in the guidance, which includes the following. They may escalate matters where the claim appears to have been filed or issued in the administrative court when it should have been issued somewhere else. If you or the other parties have failed to comply with procedural provisions in the civil procedure rules or a court order, again, if they notice that, they may escalate the matter to the lawyer or judge to consider first further case management. Um, if the case has been stayed for some time, so that means essentially suspended for some time, and there hasn't been a satisfactory update from the parties, then again, they may escalate it because it may be that the court will want to bring the case to an end in that situation. They can also escalate matters if they have concerns over the conduct of any one of the parties or maybe both of the parties. So it's very important to treat the court staff with respect and uh, to uh, be reasonable in your dealings with them. I've mentioned court office lawyers. Uh, these are qualified solicitors or barristers. They act as non-partisan lawyers and are subject to the uh, duties of an officer of the court, as all lawyers are. So therefore, their primary duty is to the court. Court office lawyers provide advice on practice and procedure in the administrative court to whoever requires it. So that is judges, court office staff, to legal practitioners, or to litigants, and this will include litigants in person. They also provide legal research and updates for the judges of the court, and they communicate with the parties and exercise delegated judicial powers to ensure that cases in the court are managed properly. It's important to note that because they're independent of the parties, they cannot give advice on the merits of your case. So they won't do that. What they can do is draw attention of the parties to provisions or precedents. So that's previous case law, which might affect the outcome of the case. If that happens and they draw your attention to something, consider what's being said carefully. It isn't legal advice, it isn't formal legal advice, and it is not a determination on the law. You've got responsibility for the conduct of your own case, and the judge is responsible for the decision on the law. However, it's important to consider what's been drawn to your attention, and try and understand it, and to see whether it makes a difference to your case. The court office lawyers can enter into discussions and they can make case management orders. Um, you can apply for such orders or a court office staff may have referred uh, the case to the lawyer and then they can make those case management orders. Or if they're looking at a case, uh, they can make an order of their own volition. So of their own, uh, own bat, as it were, they make the decision. They'll do this in order to further the overriding objective and properly manage the case. The court office lawyer's order will always be made after a consideration of the papers, but it will be made without a hearing. The kind of orders that the court office lawyer can make will include things like extending or abridging time for filing documents, they can make orders giving directions. Uh, they can add parties or remove them from the claim. They can vary a judge's orders for directions. Uh, they can consider applications for shortening, that's abridging, time for the acknowledgement of service. Uh, they can uh, determine applications for an extension of time in which to file a renewal or notice. They can order a claim which has been issued in Cardiff to be heard in Bristol or elsewhere on the Western Circuit. They can transfer a case to the Upper Tribunal, the Immigration Asylum Chamber, and they can approve consent orders. 
These will include orders to quash uh, decisions and uh, or matters relating to costs if they're a matter of consent. They're not allowed to make any orders in judicial review proceedings which relate to criminal causes or all matters. If you're not happy with the court office lawyer's order, then a judge can review it, but you have to apply for this to happen. You have a choice as to whether a, pa a review of just the papers takes place or whether there's an oral hearing, so a hearing at which you turn up and make representations. Now, you can request for a review. It has to be in writing. And if you file it within seven days of the date on which, the, on which you were served with the uh, order, uh, then there's no fee. Uh, similarly, if the order has given you a different time and you make the application within that time, then again, there's no fee. But after the time for making that application has elapsed, you have to use an application notice form N244 or PF244 and you do have to pay the relevant fee at that point. The Judicial Review Court has one master, so that's a procedural judge who makes decisions uh, on uh, the process of getting the court, getting the case to a hearing. The master has power to make uh, any order allowed under the civil procedure rules unless the civil procedure rule in question expressly states that a master may not give that type of order. So they have very broad powers. The master will generally deal with interim applications that don't fall within the powers delegated to the court office lawyers. So, the master will make interim orders relating to case management uh, or interim remedies. This will include uh, judicial review relating to uh, criminal cases. And if the prosecutor doesn't oppose a variation to bail, they can also make decisions on uh, varying bail conditions. They can make decisions determining liability for costs and making summary assessments of costs. They can also make orders relating to applications from vexatious litigants who are seeking permission to start or continue claims for judicial review. A master may make orders with or without a hearing. Challenges to the terms of an order made without a hearing by the master must be made by applying for reconsideration of the order, and this is done at an oral hearing. You make this application on form N244 or PF244, and you have to pay a fee. There will then be a hearing listed before a judge in court if the master has made an order at an oral hearing, then you can challenge that by appealing to a High Court judge. The judges of the Administrative Court have all the powers of the High Court uh, under statute, the procedure rules, and they also have the inherent jurisdiction of the court. They are High Court judges and they have all the powers of that position. If you want to challenge the terms of a case management order which has been made without a hearing, uh, you can apply for reconsideration by the judge at a hearing. Uh, if you're trying to challenge an order which was made at an oral hearing, uh, then you need to appeal.